Have you lost your job? Have you lost a loved one? Are you exhausted caring for your parents, for your kids? Well, you can find immediate relief when you read Sheila Mack's new number one bestseller, Bootstraps and Bra Straps. It contains the boots formula to move from rock bottom back into action in any situation, especially right now. If life has knocked you down, pick yourself up with bootstraps and bra straps. Get your copy at www.sheilamack.com today. Are you ready for a reboot? Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. History reminds us those hit hardest often become the change makers. This year, we've all hit crazy economic, social, and emotional rock bottoms. We all get knocked down. Something hits globally, locally, personally. It affects our health, finances, our relationships. We have to recreate a business or career. Each show, Sheila and her special guest will be sharing their reboot stories, guiding you with real solutions to upgrade and up-level emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Here on NBC's KCAA Radio, Mondays at 1 and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Pacific Time. If you're ready to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and bra straps, enjoy a listen. Here's Sheila. Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your life on your terms. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and today we have special guest, Pamela Gurley. Pamela is a professional speaker and author. She is the founder and CEO of Clark and Hill Enterprise, LLC, and I am Dr. P. Gurley, LLC founder and creator of merchandise brand Unapologetic by Dr. G, and author of I Am Not a Stereotype. I am her co-author of Living a Non-Negotiable Lifestyle, and My Life and My Dream plus My Ambition equals MY, My Success. Adjunct professor, founder, and host of Herspiration Happy Hour podcast, co-host and media correspondent for Urbanish media and blog and content writer. All right, welcome to the show, Pamela. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> yes, and I actually met you on your podcast as a guest on Herspiration and I had a blast. It was a great conversation. So I like to start the show. Um, this show is based on my new best-selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. I wrote this before this year, <laughs> and we have had every situation. So I like to start by having our guests share about a time, maybe in your personal life or in your business, where you had to overcome a tough situation and how you got back on track. Oh, that's really easy for business, uh, <laughs> you know, because... I launched my I launched Clark and Hill Enterprise on October 1st, 2017. So it's three years old and about three or four months in to my business, because at the time I decided not only to have a business, I brought another partner in and about three or four months afterwards, I dissolved the partnership, just, you know, different visions and what the expectation was of being in business. And I had to dissolve that. Needless to say, after spending a year putting together a business plan, a business model, all of this information, building a website, building logos, names, everything. I had to basically undo a good majority of what I had already done. That, mm -hmm. that took me a long time before I even launched. So four months in, it was making drastic changes. The only thing I did not do was, was change the name and change the logo, but everything else pretty much I had to start pulling off of the site because my partner, my the partner and I mm -hmm. had two different areas of specialty. And so it was literally undoing a whole lot of things plus dissolving a partnership. So, and I feel like I'm here, I am three years later, <laughs> I am twice as busy. I am very blessed. And I will also say that even after that fourth month when I was dissolving it, the piece that I was working on never stopped. So at the same time of making these changes, I still continue to work and keep Clark and Hill Enterprise generating revenue to pay for all of the overhead. 
Yes. And that's the thing about brands and, and starting a business is it takes a good year just to get things together. And then it takes another six months for people to even know you're there. Yeah. <laughs> and then I know, I know, especially yeah. when you build it and then you go through implementation and then you're halted at your implementation phase because now you have to go back to concept yes. and, and business planning and make all of these shifts and in your time and a lot of work I had already gone into it. And I mean, throwing away business cards and I mean, just everything. And I did not own, I, by that point, I also learned how to cut corners. So I stopped paying for the uh, website and rebuilt one myself that I ended up being happier with. And, yes. you know, just really starting over business emails and I mean, everything, just having to literally undo uh, you know, almost a year's worth of work and making significant changes. Yes. And that's, that's the thing that it does. It takes so much time. Now, before you started that business, were you working for somebody else or did you always have your own business? So, no. So I had my own business where I was an independent government contract where I had my own government contract back from, I think around 2000, to to around 2005 mm -hmm. and i went i worked started working for the federal government and decided i would stay there and so i did not want to make that decision to just you know leave so even after i launched my business i've continued to work for the government yes and that is mm -hmm. really important for people listening in if you want to start a side business there's some people that are like burn the boats just jump over and do your business but if you have to provide for yourself, your family and loved ones, it's not a time to do that. And it's always good to have more than one source of income. So what did you have to give up or change in your lifestyle in order to give the time required to do that business? So I, when I did launch, I was finished with school. <laughs> so trust me, I think if I could work full time, and go through a doctor a doctoral program where I finished a quarter early. Wow. You know, out of a three year program, I finished a quarter early. I felt like, you know what, I know how to navigate my time so that I can be efficient at both. So, you know, I of course where I was at, I was very, I was very senior in the government. So, you know, and still am. So it's it was just a matter of finding that balance, you know, mm -hmm. and if I gotten off work you know how to respond to emails you know of course i had to work lots of saturdays but i also felt like i just all work and no play is no fun so i made it a point where i worked part-time for myself mm -hmm. uh just so that i can make sure that i still had a little bit of balance i also have no children so that makes it a little bit easier for someone like me to be able to dedicate a lot of my time to my business when you mm -hmm. are writing when you're writing content thank god i'm a i'm a pretty efficient writer you know and you you know you can easily make the time to say okay if i have so many blogs do uh i'm gonna work so hard i also only decided you know what was best for me was to not have more than one business consulting client at a time because writing business plans is a lot of time yes. and a lot of research so i made it a point to only having one client a month for that. So that way that I struck a balance, but even still, you know, just blog writing took up a lot, but it also generated enough income for me to do it, everything that I need to pay for, for my business. I've never taken a salary out because of course I have a job. So it's always been extremely easy to strike that balance for me. Oh, and I have a support. Yeah. I also have a supportive family who understand that even if I'm on vacation, I might have to take a pause to wrap something up. Mm hmm that really makes a difference. It's it's such a gift to have a good supportive family, especially now in this time. And and I think that for those who don't, you know, I for me, I know you know my story a little bit, how I was kind of homeless at a young age and this and that. And I did actually care for all my relatives who really didn't care for me growing up until they all passed away. But I also adopted a lot of parents and grandparents to, uh, you know what I mean? Like people mm -hmm. in, in the area that I just fell in love with and we just became family. So there's, there's friends that are almost better than family sometimes, depending on your family situation. And so there are ways and support circles, women's groups, ways to help each other so that we can get through and actually all have success. 
And it, it seems as we help each other, things just get easier for everyone. It just blesses mm -hmm. everyone. So. Oh, I definitely agree. I have a very strong sisterhood of friends and I have, uh, you know, my mama, my mother and my sisters are amazing and my boyfriend's amazing. So it, like I said, I, I'm blessed that I'm around a circle of people who allow me to live in my purpose and fulfill my dreams and my goals. Yes. And I'd love to hear about some of your outside of work things that you're doing besides not traveling right now <laughs> yes, I know, I know. I, i'm telling you we're gonna really have the travel bug when this is done <laughs> i know so outside of work i'm really into philanthropy i have been on various boards of nonprofits. i'm currently the um the assist the, the vice president of operations over the culture pearl and, you know, I just took on that role maybe a month or two ago. That's exciting for me. And outside of that, I, I'm, you know, I'm an aunt. I am, you know, I have pseudo grandbabies, you know, my cousin whose kids are like my grandbabies and she's like a daughter to me. I hang out with friends. I am very intentional about my time. I have self-care time that I, where I take care of myself. I love, you know, I love wines and wineries. So I make it a point to go to a winery where I spent my birthday um, just now, recently, a few weeks ago. And I don't know. I mean, since I don't really have the opportunity to travel because I'm a culture lover, mm -hmm. I, I, that's usually my sanity. Yes. Yes. And, you know, for me, I traveled for seven years straight and like full time. I rented my house out. I traveled full time. I had my youngest two, I have six kids. I have my youngest two travel with me. We did a whole bunch of Tony Robbins leadership oh, that's events. Amazing. We had a blast. And I finally got to the point where I was like, I think I need home again. I need to like not travel for a minute. And now I'm starting to get the bug because I can't, you know, they tell me I can't. And I'm like, why? Okay, now I really want to go. <laughs> yeah, people, you know what? I tell people all the time when you are traveling for work, that's a different level of travel. I've done that. I did that for about five years working for the State Department. And I will tell you, whoo, it's a lot, you know, and and I was not even spending that mid, that long of time in each area or region that I was in. Oh, my gosh, you have to excuse me. This is so odd because that phone never was. <laughs> never at all. Uh, forgot to turn my office phone off. Um, yeah, so for me, it was traveling like all the way to either the Philippines or Malaysia and staying for three days, but it took 30 something hours to get there. Mm -hmm. That that becomes extremely trying. And so, you know, it's just I, I'm 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 grateful for the break that I took, but now I am definitely ready to be back on an airplane. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I've traveled a little bit. I've traveled a little bit during quarantine for, for work and for leisure. Like I've been to Atlanta and where I've driven and I've flown to Detroit and I've driven to Alabama where I spent like five weeks with my mom. But that was was not really that was not really vacation. I still worked the whole time. But I think for me, for mental health purposes, I needed mm -hmm. a change of scenery. Right. Yes. I I think it really helps. So if you are now going back on lockdowns and you're listening in, try your best to see if there's ways to still get out, even if it's to go to a, a, a garden or some kind of outdoor place that you're allowed to go and, and get some fresh air, maybe where there's not a ton of people and you don't have to wear your mask <laughs> and you can breathe a little bit. Uh, that's always nice. I We have my daughter and I, my daughter's living with me uh, full time now and going to school, the dorms closed. So, you know, what are you going to do? And, and I love it. I'm as a parent, I am loving every single second of having, like I said, we're having an extended slumber party. She's like, okay, <laughs> but we oh. have a lot of fun. And I've, I've worked really hard to make sure that we are having as much fun as we can, despite the situation, because it's really easy for anyone to get into a depression, to feel bad, um, or just frustrated with our current situation. Do you, do you have things that you do that have kept you um, in good spirits through this crazy year? Work. 
<laughs> work, you know, work has been a, a huge distraction for me. I, I do a lot of media. And so this year where it slowed me down from doing my workshops and trainings and conferences and, and book signings, what it did do for me was give me the time to do a lot of media and to get yeah. my name out there and have opportunities that I would not have had had COVID had not happened. So I've just made, I've, I've looked at it differently. It's also times for reflective times where it gave me insight on making a life adjustments and, mm -hmm. you know, just being able to be there more for friends and family. And I, I know when COVID first happened, I had a Zoom line open called Coffee with, Coffee with Coworkers. And mm -hmm. this was just, I just opened up my Zoom for about two hours, Monday through Friday. And then I think I did it three days out the week after a while, uh, where I would just open my Zoom up and just had it up for, for anyone who wanted to pop in. And I, I sent the link out to specific friends who I knew especially was either by themselves or, you know, just needed a break, you know, can I to have water cooler conversations? And yeah. and I would work during the whole time and people would pop on and off and it was, but it was open for two hours. And I think it really helped a lot of people. Yeah. So normally around five or six people would join sometimes only three and sometimes it'd just be me and one other person, but I always left that line open no matter how many people came on. Mm -hmm. Yes, that really does help. And even the college, like uh, for my daughter, she's doing online and they have the Zoom and they have clubs that are meeting online now. And she, it's just been a, a real saving grace for her because we were both kind of going a little bonkers. <laughs> we're not homebodies. We are not. I mean, imagine my youngest two traveled with me for three years straight out of the seven mm -hmm. full time. And, wow. and so- they also tr we traveled and for us to just like not <laughs> you know to be home we've never been so so many hours home probably in the last 10 years as this one year and we love yeah. the house we love our home it's a house but it's a home but it's just that's just we're kind of like that so <laughs> mm -hmm. and we're really yeah. social also so it's helped in a way to keep connected. I do want to share one thing real quick. Um, have you heard of 211? No. Mm -mm. Okay, this is really important for anyone listening in and, and something I'm kind of the unofficial spokesperson now. On the 211, about 60% of the people I've asked have not heard about it. And, you know, that's something that we've never had to need resources like. Oh. for a second okay we're back um you will find that you will have all kinds of resources that's if you need food on two one one okay are you still there yes okay yes i am still so, here okay good i don't know it it Running out you seem to be freezing on my on it. It looks like you're I'm freezing on your oh. side. Hmm. I okay. have all of my bars and my signal strength is is high. <laughs> Plus, I'm right here where my router is. I'm not sure. We have direct connect, but they did have issues. Um, I met okay. at a at a studio, so <laughs> I don't know. But they've been having some some glitches. They're working on still. So okay. anyway, so. Keep 211 in mind. Maybe you don't need it. Hopefully, you'll never need it. But keep it in mind for friends like those um, cooler hour times. Share it with all the people that you're connecting with because a lot of times people don't ask for help when they need it. Mm -hmm. And that being able, we can't like give everybody everything. We don't have it ourselves this year, maybe, but we're able to give them that resource, a simple resource. Mm -hmm to change their life and help them get back on track even faster this year. And, you know, that's, that's going to make such a difference for people just, just to be able to give that as a gift for mm -hmm. people out there that need, need some help right now. So, Oh yes. I, I, I let people know all the time. It's okay not to be okay. Yes. A hundred percent. And we need to be more intentional and be, more mindful about checking in even on our strong friends. Mm -hmm. Especially I think the strong friends, because everybody thinks the strong friends are good. I know. <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> no one needs to check on them. At that's all. Right. Yeah, but no, but that's that is really furthest from the truth. <laughs> mm -hmm. We need yes. to be checking on on our, our strong friends. And so even I have group chats with uh, different people I send morning stuff to. And so they've been more intentional about that saying in there, how is everyone doing? Yes. And check and check in, you know, how are how is your family and all of those things? And I think that that's so important. Yes, I really agree. And you know, this last last year, um, we lost my youngest son out of my. I have six oh. kids. Three I adopted. Three are mine. They're all mine. But you know, I lost my youngest son. He had a heart condition, and oh. since fifth grade, um, it's called Wolf Parkinson. And he mm -hmm. he went to sleep at Grandma's for the holidays. We and I was flying in, and he didn't wake up. And for my family and I, it was just like wow, I, you know, and I said, you know what, we're going to feel whatever, you know, I bought a punching bag for the boys. I have all boys and one girl, <laughs> you know, wow. one guy. So I was like, you can punch punching bag and we can cry. And if you need to wake me up at three in the morning, wake me up. If we need to mm -hmm. talk, all night, we're going to talk all night. If we're going to cry all night, we're going to cry all night. We're going to get through this. And I think that it really, we had the funeral in January and we finally started getting back on track in February. We went to Tony Robbins' birthday party in LA and that was our first trip out and we were kind of forcing it, but I we needed to get out. And mm -hmm. then came home, it was a few days, a short trip, and we, we went back to our new home Our and um, with that, then the world shut down and my daughter said, mom, if ever we needed a universal pause for our oh. family this year. And so we really have embraced that part, the healing journey, the the time that we needed. And, you know, I put my book was going to come out in January. It came out in April. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Because it still, it still did everything it made bestseller, everything it needed to do. And mm -hmm. so if you had to put things on hold if you're listening in and you had to put something on hold this year because of all this something happened in your personal life or yes. COVID, whatever it was that doesn't mean it's the end it doesn't right. mean you to give up it means mm -hmm. not now but when the time is right everything will show up in perfect time yes they so, always say a blessing delayed is not a, a blessing denied Yes. And apparently you going to school for so many years, <laughs> getting the degree and everything that you're doing and working, um, that, that must have been a lot to have to put things, other things on hold to get your work done. And yeah. I still was so intentional about my time with my family. I think that through the whole three years, there was probably two occasions that I really missed, two weddings. But outside of that, and that's towards the end when it really got real with dissertation proposal and dissertation defense, and of course, doing my study part. But for the most part, I still was very, I was still traveling, I was still going and hanging out with friends, you know, but I was here again, I was very intentional about how I gave my time. And I did not want to be one of those people who just went to school and worked, went to school and worked. I had to find that happy balance. Because mm -hmm. that was also my time of healing a lot, you know, during that time of going to school. That was, I was coming out of a divorce. I was relocating from Germany. So that was really that time where I was really learning about myself. And education has always been one of those things that's been very easy for me to excel at. And professionally, my career has always been very easy for me to excel at, but just taking those moments to really find out and figure out who I was. Mm -hmm. and who I am, that was a, that was very different for me. So I was able to find Pam during that process and enjoy. I just enjoyed life. I love that. So what, what advice do you have for students that are in college still um, this year or maybe going back to school to get that degree they always wanted because now we have time? Uh, what advice do you have? Um, there's balance and anything else to, to keep going when it's kind of boring because it's online? <laughs> you know, I, I am one of those. I am not a big online. I'm not a big online professor. I really am one of those types of professors that prefers face-to-face -face because I like games and all of those things. But I think the virtual environment now is is 
evolving where even online programs are starting to have a little more face time. They're putting more people in groups. And I would just say, take advantage of it right now. I think because, you know, whereas before when you had to sit in, in a classroom, that's where you were at. So right now you can connect anywhere. And, you know, while even though it's COVID, make time quarantine for a little while and, and do it from somewhere else. We all need that same break. I mean, I was working from home. I equated the same way. I needed a different scene. You mm -hmm. know, if you can travel, travel somewhere else and go and be with family and go be with friends, providing that they're safety measure in place. But mm -hmm. this is when you can actually do it because you can be anywhere as long as you can access and get your schoolwork done. But I think the other thing is that students, I don't care what age you are, you have to also be realistic about your mental health through this program and be open with your professor about it. Yes, that's so true. And, you know, I think that one of the things that I noticed with my kids, I have one son that's doing online school and it's really mm -hmm. hard for him because he's not as disciplined. My daughter's always been just disciplined. She's just mm -hmm. like, got this preschool on up. <laughs> she was like, I need, I make a list. And she'd make little pictures of what she was going to do for her schedule. And, and she's been like, like, it's just natural for her. And my son's more like, okay, I need a little guidance here. Super smart. And, just, and that's just him. And so it's been a discipline for me personally. It has been a discipline in managing more things at home because I can't have anybody come in and help. I can't have a guy come and fix something or move some or, you know, things that I would normally not have to deal with besides working 14 hours a day. And I'm like, okay, how the heck do I, my, my, yeah. my, my, and I was like, now how do we cook? <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, see, I was uh, in the beginning of quarantine. That's all I did. I feel like, you know, other than work, I was <laughs> was cooking and I had because I commute down to Washington, D.C. and have, have, having to commute home after, a, you know, a 10 hour day. It's like no. never really had a chance to cook. But now being able to make myself breakfast and make myself coffee in the morning and just take my time and you know, cook dinner all the time. I was, it was, it was so nice. I don't cook as much. Apparently I don't, that was a phase. <laughs> I still cook. I still cook because I, I really have always loved cooking, but you know, the, when the world opened back up and I can go and just eat or just, you know, felt comfortable enough to receive DoorDash and all of those things. Yes. Cooking, just me going to a grocery store is, it's a lot. Right. I yes. have to be I have to be in a mood that and because where I go is was often Trader Joe's and you have to be outside and wait in the line before they only let so many people in. And to me, I just I, I'm not built like that. <laughs> yes. I am not built like that at all. If I go to pump gas and it doesn't have a card, a card reader, it's a wrap. I'm pulling off so that I can go <laughs> find me one where I don't have to physically go into a store. I am definitely one of those spoiled people. I should have moved to you know, to New Jersey where they pump your gas for you. That oh, that was a nice during that this. Is, I yeah. know that is heaven. I love when I'm traveling up to New York or you know or anywhere where I have to go through Jersey. I deliberately will get gas just yeah. because I know I don't have to pump. Isn't and that my car nice? is great on gas. I know they really need to put that back, you know, in place. <laughs> with, with this, I think it might be a good idea. I think it would reduce. I don't know any kind of spreading of whatever. I don't know. Mm -hmm could be I've never we don't we don't have that in California or Nevada which is where I live depending on the time of year it is and so we've never I don't remember having that ever maybe when when really? I was young they had it but not in our states which you would think it would be so nice <laughs> well you know I remember growing up in 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 the south and when we were traveling it was optional you can either have somebody pump your gas or, you know, you can pump your gas yeah. yourself. I'm really telling my age here. <laughs> Nowhere offers that now other than New Jersey that I know of. I have not. And I've traveled like almost all over the U.S., you know, eat by car, even when I was stationed in Fort Hood. And I would drive all the way to Georgia and sometimes drive all the way to Virginia. And no, I had to get out and I had to pump my own gas. It's yeah. so just unfortunate. <laughs> so if anybody out there 
knows where, you know, you can, if you're traveling where you can get somebody to pump your gas other than New Jersey, hit me in the DM because <laughs> I'm curious. I might have to just like travel there just because. <laughs> yes. yes. Well, you know, for me, I, I ended up doing the online shopping, be, you know, because where I live most of the year now, we don't have, we're far away from the stores. So it's really oh. like 30 minute drive to the store, 40 minute ba back, and then you've got to shop and you've got to wait in that line that you were talking about. And <laughs> I was like, I don't think so. And I realized my, my grocery bill went down. Oh, wow. That See, mine, mine went up because <laughs> when I'm out, I will pick up everything. But I'm also a very natural eater. So what I've been doing is if I went shopping, I would just cook. And I would try to cook everything before it went bad. And then I will just store the refrigerator and would just eat it whenever. But oh no or i just do a lot of frozen i do nothing canned i don't really do box stuff so it, there's a there's a payback for that kind of eating too <laughs> you know you have to shop i i was accustomed to shopping on sundays i still yes. the store every week and i would just pick up what i want but now it's buying everything more because i don't like waiting in line so i just pick up everything that i need and freeze it or you know cook it Yes, yeah, so and then I, this while this quarantine, I also started my own gardening. So I was growing a lot of my own vegetables and spices and stuff. Well, I failed at gardening. I really <laughs> tried. I tried this tower thing, and it everything died. It was. <laughs> oh my gosh! It good. It's we live in the desert. Oh yes, that's twice as hard. That's twice as when hard. I, we were like, well, we would have starved. <laughs> <laughs> it did not work out. I'm, and, I'm hoping next year that some of the stuff that has, uh, has still had the roots will grow back up. I have like two. I have one on my back patio and then I have one in my backyard that I, I made. And so I'm hoping I still got aloe out there still growing because I like to make my own facials and um, aloe gels and all of that stuff. Very homeopathic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for me, I just because I've had to stick to the list. Mm -hmm. I'm to, it it's week, and they gave us a big bag of junk food, like oh. I, Cocoa Puffs and and Fruit Loops and and soda. Oh my gosh. All the stuff that that I don't eat, and my daughter was like, oh, "Mom, you got me a surprise!" And she was so. <laughs> oh <laughs> she, my gosh! Well, yes, I can imagine. I can imagine. She's a perfect little shape and everything, so she doesn't have to think. And I was like, "You didn't tell me you wanted this stuff. I could have bought it for you." She's like, "So we call them up, and they said, no, you get to keep it because we put it in your house. You, we dropped it off, and we can't take it back, and they didn't charge." And I said, honey, I think well, you manifested. You wanted that so bad. You manifested it. <laughs> I know. So, oh, my gosh. That is, well, good for her because I'm sure she enjoyed the sweetness for a little while. Um, I had no idea. I was like, you didn't tell me anything. She's like, well, you just buy what you buy and I eat it. <laughs> typical kid. That's not a bad, that's not a bad problem to have either. Yes, <laughs> That's so true. So I would love to learn a little bit more about your you, your um, nonprofit, I think it was, that you're working So I'm with. working with a nonprofit called Cultured Pearl. It's really, I'm, I'm still kind of learning the grasping of it. I'm just awarded, which is how I really found out about it. I was awarded uh, a recognition for it to be a Cultured Pearl woman. And it's really about women who are, you know, community based, doing really great things, that's making a difference, inspiring other women. And of course, it, it aligns with a lot of things, but they also offer scholarships and, and other things for students and whatnot. So they, they do, you know, different drive, fund, fundraising drives. And so for me to connect to something like that, I felt like I, I was, it was destined for us to meet. Then I met her because she had approached me um, through my publicist at the time to give me an award uh, to recognize me for the things that I have done and have been doing. Oh, that's great. And I think there's something about when you're giving back and helping other people, it blesses you in some other way, not because you want to be blessed. It just does. I've yeah. never seen that not happen. So if you're listening in right now and maybe you're having trouble finding work, 
and you have incredible talents. You have a degree or you're very talented. You don't need a degree depending on what you do. And you haven't been able to find a job. Go volunteer. I oh, will definitely. Yes, because they will see who you are when you show up and you give your hundred percent. They're going to either give you a recommendation or give you a job offer. I've had in my lifetime, three or four times I volunteered. I always was given job offers. I wasn't even looking for. And they were like, just fill in the application after the fact because of how I showed up. Mm -hmm. And that's the way to do it. And it's so it's in that heart space. You're giving back. You care about that cause that you're, you're going to be able to shine and you will get that job. Yeah. But the other part about, about volunteering is it closes the work gap. Mm -hmm. So if you are not working, being able to volunteer, you can still gain experience that's going to work in your favor, like you said, but it also filled in large gaps in between resumes and people do pay attention to that. Yes. Yes. In fact, my daughter, she, um, she uh, is studying psychology. And oh. so, yes. And so her thing was she was looking for a job and she wanted to, she has a friend that works at a girl's home. It's a girl's home for pregnant young girls that have wow. babies. They either have babies or they're pregnant and going to have a baby. Mm -hmm. And she, she looks probably 16 years old, even though she's 24. And she walked in there as a volunteer and got hired. And the one lady told her, oh, I don't know. You're so nice. I don't think you're going to make it here because these girls wow. are a little tough. Well, that boss left two weeks later because she couldn't handle it. And my daughter's been there four years, just about almost four years at that organization. And so, <laughs> and so that's that, amazing. And you need to have your bachelor's degree, but somehow she got her job mm -hmm. and because she can work with these kids and and it's something we've always done i've always had programs in my stores where i worked with kids like you know at risk youth and and kids emancipating from foster care so that's it so she's used to that so for her it's like what what's the problem and so that's what it is she has her talent in that so you find your talent and go volunteer and before you know it and also yeah. the other so she has no gap she now there were some closer closures and she was still able to do things. And now she doesn't have to do the, the years and hours of study. A lot of times people will get their degree and they have absolutely no work experience. Correct. And, and so she, she has gets, work experience. Yes. yes. So it's really helpful to do that. And the other thing is I think it keeps us out of depression mm -hmm. or, you know, self pity self, you know, especially during this time, because if you are out of your head and in your heart, helping yeah. somebody, in gratitude, there's no way that you can actually <laughs> feel sorry for yourself at the same time. It just, there's no space for that. Mm -hmm. And it makes, Oh, I definitely point. agree. I definitely agree. A hundred percent. Yes. Yes. So I would love to know how people can get a hold of some of the, the work that you've done, your, your books and different programs, how they can get involved. Okay, so my book, I Am Not a Stereotype, I Am Her, can be, or H E R really, can be found on ebook on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and Apple iBooks. Uh, you can also find it on my website, the actual hardcover or a soft cover, whichever one you decide, at www.iamdrpgurley.com backslash shop. Um, that's I am Dr. P. Gurley .com backslash shop. And for my social media sites, I am on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter at I A M D R P G U R L E Y. I am Dr. P. Gurley. Same brand across everywhere. My podcast is Herspiration Happy Hour. And of course, it's on Facebook and uh, or you can connect on social media at on Facebook and Twitter at uh, no, Facebook and Instagram at Herspiration Happy Hour and on Twitter, Herspiration HH, because it's too many words, too many letters. <laughs> so, and we record the first and we release the, the first and third Wednesday of every month. And, you know, we're a really fun podcast. You know, you've been on there. Great, engaging, very transparent conversation. Uh, you can connect with my business, Clark and Hill Enterprise at www.clarkandhill.com. 
enterprise, no S on the end, dot com, where I write content and also do business consulting, write business plans, uh, website content, a lot of things. You do a lot. I would love I do to do a, <laughs> a little just a little bit before we go. Um, a little bit more about I am not a stereotype. I am her. About that, what's in that book? Oh, so that is uh, really taking a look at the stereotypes and debunking myth myths about Black women. You know, just letting people know you don't you don't have to be boxed in. And I talk about how toxic the way that way that way of thinking and that way of placing people in box affected me growing up uh, affected my decisions that I made how you know yes I excelled you know I hear again I say professionally and academically but internally I was broken trying to figure out where I fit in and that's from you know both being you know a black woman and then being multi-ethnic when I look different from other people especially when my curly hair is out not braided up and but just all the different stereotypes that are out there about black, about black women. And I wanted to have conversations about it, about, about natural hair, about the perceptions of, of black women being bitter or angry uh, and, you know, just ha dealing with imposter syndrome because of our own, the way that the world sees us, we feel like we have to work twice as hard, but then we're hard on ourselves. And so we battle with, you know, uh, imposter syndrome. I know I certainly have, and I, and I still do at times, where no matter how professional we are, no matter how much we know, we still deal with these levels of inadequacies, wondering if we're enough, you know, to fit in into a different world, you know, professionalized mostly. Um, but I wanted to have these difficult conversations and I wanted them to be out there. I talk about, you know, being in toxic relationships, especially when about self-love and self-care and what that really looks like. And I, I wanted to really share that, that we are stronger than what we really are. And I, I wanted to have people take an introspective look at their own lives, you know, through my book. I love that. That is, that is a very important topic and something that we don't talk about um, as women. And then um, you're going further and, and getting into all these different stereotypes and situations that block us. I mean, when you think, I think about my daughter and she is, she's multi-ethnic and she's, and she's, she's who she is and she's very proud of everything she does, but she had this house full of boys. Mm. And it was, I think that kind of helped her because mm -hmm. it was different than the pressure. And there was a lot of pressure from girls. And then even adult women, mm -hmm. against other adult women, when we really need each other in community. Right. And it, it, that's when we when we switch that and we're able to support each other and help each other and connect instead of compete Correct. or whatever that is. I don't Correct. even know. What well, yeah. the goal was to change the narrative of that. But we also have to take ownership and responsibility of what it takes to change that narrative and what it actually looks like. And that's why I wrote my book. That's I didn't cute. feel like I, I needed to complain about something that exists. I needed to address the problem and have real conversations about it and open that dialogue, but show this is what we need to do to make these changes. This is yeah. what we need to do as of a community of, of black women and, and even white women and white men who are more angry than, I, than most black women that I know but we still have all of these labels. So what does it take to remove the labels off of black women? It takes a community of people recognizing that we are just like everybody else. Yes, very good, very true. And um, I'm so grateful that you were on the show today. Uh, could you just share one website or place people can go before we, we um, go to a break? so that people can be sure to get your book and connect. Okay, my book is at www.iamdrpgurley. Everything that I'm doing media-wise, every conference, this is a definite way you can connect with me because it is my personal brand. <laughs> so I am Dr. P. Gurley is, is definitely there and you can follow me. I'm very personal about things. If you have questions, if you have concerns, I'm, I'm always here. Beautiful. All right. Thank you again for being a Thank guest. Thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. 
Okay, and we'll be back after these messages. Stay tuned. All right, if you are just tuning in, this is the Sheila Mack Show, Reality at its Finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your business and personal life on your terms. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and I wanted to take a moment to reflect on one of my favorite authors and quotes. The quote is, Create a definite plan for carrying out your desire and begin at once, whether you're ready or not to put this plan into action. And the author was Napoleon Hill. Now, my memory or my first meeting with Napoleon Hill was actually back when I was eight years old. And I did actually mention it in my new book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. This was such a changing point in my life. I was eight years old. I was living house to house. My family was not, my mother and father were were having health issues. They weren't really able to care for me full time. So I was sent from one relative's house to the other. Sometimes I was with the healthy grandparents. Sometimes I was with a group of grandparents that wasn't so healthy and there was a lot of abuse going on. And at this point, I was eight years old. I remember I was actually um, in a nice neighborhood. Unfortunately, the home had a lot of abuse going on. My mother was home with me for a short time and I had taken up some little part-time jobs helping out in the neighborhood so I would literally this is back in the day when when this was I guess a normal thing I would go help out with with cutting the lawn or cleaning and, and um, actually polishing furniture when people actually did that and I would go do that for the neighbors and get money and so I went with my hard-earned money and I went over to another neighbor's house who was having a garage sale and I found this incredible book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill and at the time my little eight-year-old mind okay this is eight-year-old mind there was a lot of abuse and my mother wasn't financially able to or health-wise able to help me she had polio as a child and she had some other issues going on and emotional things and so it was hard for her and in my mind I thought okay this book is gonna do it because it is gonna tell me how to think and grow rich and I really need to do that because I wanted to get my own house or apartment for my mother and I so that we wouldn't have to be moving around and and she would be in a safe place and I would be in a safe place and so I took this book home and I slept with the book. I read the book, Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich from cover to cover. This little eight-year-old girl, I read that book over and over again um, for an entire year. And I literally still have that original copy with me today. I keep it on my nightstand by my bed and I still reread it from time to time and it has been such an incredible gift and I think that somehow it was something that the principles in there I took that to heart a lot of the principles in there and I I really lived by a lot of that and and the idea of creating a definite plan for carrying out your desire and beginning at once whether you're ready or not um, to put the plan into action is something I did often and I still do today and so that is just part of the secret sauce to getting back on your feet when you've hit a tough spot and you have to start over again sometimes you have to sit down and create a definite plan of what your goals are and your outcomes are even though you're not whether you're ready or not to put the plan into actions it's now 
even with the unknown, then I have been able to travel the world virtually and I have events online in Australia, South Africa. Um, I've had events in London. I've had events in all over the United States that have gone national and international online. So the way my thinking about events and how I do events has changed and I'm, I'm very grateful that, that I did relocate to, to a space where that's available, yet there's also nature and different things that I, I personally wanted for myself and my family to be able to enjoy lakes and hikes and, and swimming and, and all these great things. So this year, coming up on New Year's, maybe it's a birthday too, create a definite plan for carrying out your desire and beginning at once, whether you are ready or not to put this plan into action. A reminder from Napoleon Hill. And I can promise you one thing. You are going to get people, family, friends, loved ones, that when you declare, when you make a public declaration and you say, I am going to do X, Y, or Z. This is my goal. This is my plan. When you say something or you start working toward a plan or a goal, people are, you're going to get some pushback that I can promise you and and that's going to be out of love out of protection out of sometimes it's out of jealousy or concern it doesn't matter you've got to go with your definite plan your definite plan and listen to your personal desire not what somebody else wants for your life not what maybe you wanted years ago as your success or happiness or whatever that goal or outcome is, whether that's for business or your personal life, this is your time. You can take your power back and your life back this year going into 2021. This is something, obviously, it's something that needs to happen right now <laughs> as soon as possible. It doesn't even have to wait until the 31st of December or the 1st of January to be put into place. It needs to be put into action as soon as possible. Now, I think this is a beautiful time and space for us to have that, those moments. Well, maybe a lot of us are on the holiday vacation time and you might have some time off from work. It's a great time to take advantage of that space and do that that planning plan your action steps make your decisions think about what you're going to do and so that that is really going to give you different results it doesn't matter what the world is doing as much as what you've decided to do and that's another Napoleon Hill concept and that's definiteness of purpose once you have the definiteness of purpose, the definite decision has been made and you plot your course of action, yes, you may have to course correct. We don't know what surprise is next. <laughs> That's okay because as long as you are moving forward, that is going to make all the difference. I also would like to invite those who are interested in an accountability and group program, we do have, I am offering a lifestyle design program. It is, yes, I want to reinvent my life on my terms. It is guided by me personally. It's an engaging online training that will help you reboot and reinvent an area of your business or personal life. And while we go through the upgraded life program, you'll notice that the tools, accountability, friendship with the other members will help you as you learn to apply the Boots formula to help you live your life, a more meaningful life on your terms and get even more happiness while you're par participating in your redesign process. 
I will be guiding you each step of the way to living life and doing business on your terms. So these are small group courses and this course is actually going to be 50% off. It is a one month course. We meet weekly and there's two different times that you can meet either during the day or an evening time. It's specific time, it's live. There's also um, email response back and forth during the week to help you personalize your lifestyle design. So I'd love to work with you on that. It's a great affordable way to get into a group setting where you keep each other accountable and I would love to work with you. So if you are interested in that, go to SheilaMack.com and there you will see lifestyle design. I want to reinvent my life on my terms and it is going to be marked at half off. So I'm looking forward to that and that there's also a free gift for you and anybody that's signing up for the course or not, if you go to the SheilaMack.com, you will see there is a small mini course. This is a recorded video course that's the introduction to the Boots formula. This is something to watch to get an idea for the Boots formula and how to apply it to your life goals or your business goals for this year. All right, now, don't forget creating a definite plan for carrying out your desire needs to begin at once. So think of two ways you can get started now. And now we are going. So here it is, my latest book. I have to let you know something just between you and me. This book is not one size fits all, just like a pair of boots or a bra. So the formula is designed to help you through any situation. And I'm giving you some homework. Grab a copy of my latest book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. That's right. If life has knocked you down, get ready to pick your... Have you lost your job? Have you lost a loved one? Are you exhausted caring for your parents, for your kids? Well, you can find immediate relief when you read Sheila Mack's new number one bestseller, Bootstraps and Bra Straps. It contains the boots formula to move from rock bottom back into action in any situation, especially right now. The life has knocked you down. Pick yourself up with bootstraps and bra straps. Get your copy at www.sheilamack.com today.